Planter. He's definitely a planter. It's just not as good as. Uh, there we go. Give you a little room. Yeah, he was a little feisty on the hit, but not too much after. Holy cow! We cannot even get our our rigs back. Hey, welcome to Hooked on Utah. Today we've got a great adventure for you. I'm with my good friend Steve Brown. He's got a little technique up here at Deer Creek we're going to employ and see if we can't put some really cool fish in the boat. So sit back, relax, and enjoy today's crisp fall adventure. So Steve's out here messing around. While Steve's messing around with uh, his professional overrun, I'm going to catch <laughs> fish number one right here. And then I'll show you what we're doing. We're actually running a couple of different rigs. So look at this little planter. This is on a surface rig. So our idea today, beautiful, crisp fall day. We're going to run our downriggers down to about 20 feet. And then our surface, we're just going to run, you know, my favorite, the Lucky Craft. This is gonna work on every lake in the state of Utah this time of year. So right now we've got flashers and squid down deep. And then on the top, we're running Lucky Craft. This is fish number one right here. Nice little planter. This is a good one to take home if you want something to eat. But this is our fish number one for the day. Pop him free. Dude, he hit it so light. Let him go, he's back in and gone. He's out of here, let me show you what I'm using. I've got a little Lucky Craft right here just in this rainbow pattern. I absolutely love these colors in the fall. Even these little bows kind of have that little spawning look. So I'll run this at the surface. Nothing else but just run it at the surface so it's down about three to four feet, pick up those surface fish. And then we've got our downriggers down a little deeper, hoping to pick up the bigger fish. So let's see how that goes. See if we can put another fish in the boat while Steve's dealing with the professional overrun. Yeah, he did hit it. Well, that's the real shallow one. So, yeah, that's running on the surface. Yep. I like those because the active fish will come up and nail them. Yeah, and, and a lot uh, of fish are shallow yeah, right now. Right now you got fish up at the surface. They're sunning, they're kind of basking in the warmth of the sun. Water temps 54.4. So the Lucky Craft on the surface is a great way to go. Even a crankbait or a rattle trap, try different things on your surface setup and then go traditional down a little deeper. So once we get over here, I'm going to drop down even deeper and see if we can pick up a brown or two that might be down near the bottom. Oh, there we go. Fish on, fish oh, on, fish yeah. on. Oh, I love it. On the Lucky Craft, on the surface. This is why I love using the Lucky Craft. You, you pick off a bunch of the active fish that are right up at the surface. And then these bigger fish that might be a little less active that you've got to troll right through, um, you're going to nail with your riggers that are down a little deeper. You know, this is probably going to be planter size. In fact, I can see him. He's crossed over over here. Oh, he just came off. He was planter size. I could see him. He had moved over. So let me just show you. I'm running a little different color. This is Ghost Minnow. It's another one of my favorites. And I'm just running this right off my, you know, this is actually a cranking stick. Really soft tip so it absorbs the initial blow when the fish strike it. But that was planter, he's probably 12, 13 inches, decent little fish. You're gonna pluck a bunch of those off. Um, and then down deeper, you should get whacked by the bigger fish. So it's fun because you're constantly having action happen at the surface um, while you work through some of these other fish.
You got fish on? Fish on. Steve is on, man. Fish on. It. There we go. Dude, that is number three on the surface Lucky Craft. That is so awesome. You know, it's interesting. The Lucky Craft has just outproduced the downrigger so far. These fish are really near the surface. You've had a couple. Yep. And this is the third one. This is the first one that really got buttoned go good. But uh, another planter. You know, it's funny, Steve, how these planters, will they're going after, you know, that four inch Lucky Craft. They want a big meal and the big fish will crush this as well. But hey, this is fun, especially if you bring your kids up, your grandkids, and they're whacking a bunch of these right there. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a fun day of fishing. Plier, Steve-O? Yeah, we may need them for this one. You slow him down and I'll unbuckle him. All right. He really inhaled that one too. Yeah, he did. We'll get the top, we'll get the bottom here. There we go. I'll get out of your nice way. Nice little planter. Nice. Yeah. Those, are, those are good frying pan fish. Don't throw yourself in. <laughs> He's gone. He's going in. But, you know, right now, middle of the week, air temperature's about 49. It's crisp, but we've got the lake to ourselves. Listen, if you hit your favorite lake in Utah, I promise you, you know, run on the surface, downriggers, it's gonna produce fish anywhere in the state of Utah right now. We have to be on Deer Creek, but we could hit Jordan L, Rockport, Echo. We could go south and we're gonna see the same results using this technique. There's, oh, fish. Oh, you're getting hit. You got a fish on there. Pop it free, Steve. You got a good fish. Keep her tight. Keep her tight. Still got it? Yeah, he's there. Nice. Oh, yeah. It's a good fish. Nice. This one is a better fish than the last one. Oh, I can see it right there. Yeah, that's a, that's a good fish. A much gonna, better fish than the last I'm one. I'm going to move this line over. Oh, yeah, that's a solid fish. There's a solid two-pound fish. Yeah, this one may want to be netted. Okay. Swing your pole to the right, Steve, just to kind of move him away from these lines, and I will. Yeah, he's a much better fish. Okay, this and I'll is, get this, is uh, this is one of those holdover fish. You can... Yeah, let's ski him up on there, and I'll see if we can net him. There we go. Boom, look at that. Much better fish. That's solid. Solid two pound bow. And he's a planter. Look, his fins are clipped, but look how healthy he is. And that's, that's a deeper fish that came on the flasher and squid yep. off the downrigger. I love that. Steve, if you, I'll hold your rod. If you'll grab the pliers over there, then I'll, uh, we'll unbutton him for you. See where he's hooked. He's just right in the bottom of the jaw. You want to be careful when you pop out your flasher and a squid and your wedding ring because uh, if you bust that line, your beads go everywhere. All right, let go of that, Steve, and I'll let you show him your fish. I'll get him out of there in the sun. How sweet is that? Gorgeous fish. Should we put him back? Let's do it. Two pounder, or do you want you want that guy going home in your? your... Nope. Let's let him come we'll come back and get him next year. So he looks like he's almost ready to go. I can hold him in here like this, facing the water. Let him catch his breath. Turn, and there he goes. Come on, buddy. And down he goes. Perfect. He's going to swim off. That's a great way to do it. Hold him in the net. Point him into the street, into kind of your drift or your trawl. This time of year, it's less critical because the water's cold and it's got some oxygen flowing. Summertime, super critical. That's why I like the Boga grip to hold them by the bottom jaw. Hope it holds their mouth open. You can troll for you know, another minute or two. And then you'll feel them starting to try to go. When they're ready, let them go. So what I like to do is I've cut off about, you know, when he's not totally yeah. stretched out. It's about half inch worth of worm. Then I like to push it up, kind of, yeah, over the shank like that. Just straighten it out. So, and then this little spinner has popped up over. 
and there we go. That's what it looks like. When it's in the water, that tail's gonna hold straight, so you get a nice straight spin. That's what you're looking for. And then, you know, this has got a little bit of a curve to it, so it pulls a little more action. And we're going about 1.8 miles an hour. That seems to be the ticket. All right, Steve, you're good to go. All the gear used on this week's adventure can be found at your local Sportsman's Warehouse or online at sportsmanswarehouse.com. Hey, I want to walk you through the baits that we used today at Deer Creek. We had a lot of success on some unusual baits, so let me walk you through them. All right, we trolled two rods behind the boat at the surface without using downrigger or weight. We actually pulled crankbaits, we pulled rattle traps, and we pulled stick baits. All three produced fish. And I know some of you are saying you actually pulled a rattle trap for bass or a crankbait. Not a lot of people will do that for trout, but they will produce fish fast and furious. On our most of our rigs, we ran a dodger of various colors and sizes. We tried needlefish, triple teasers, but the real winner today was actually this Max um, wedding ring. It really produced fish left and right, and we used some pinks. We ran a couple of different colors, and then we also tried the Rocky Mountain Tackle squid that you'd pull for kokanee, but tipping it with a worm, the trout absolutely loved it. On our downriggers, I just used my soft tip long rods that you'd throw, say, for spinner baits or crank baits, 14 pound test fluorocarbon, downrigged them down, and I don't use anything heavier than that. I just stick to light tackle because you really enjoy the fight. All the baits found here, you can get at your local sportsman's warehouse. So get in, get geared up, and get in the outdoors. Nice fish on again. You still got him? Yeah, not as good as the last one. Doesn't matter, man, I love it. Steve is on. So they're shallow because that downrig is only running about 15, 16 feet. Yeah, this is a smaller fish. This is a more like that first one, the planter. Nice. Maybe Still a, a good better. fish though. I like it because we're we're starting to kind of figure out where these fish are, and it seems like 15 feet, but you know, this is a look at how much this is a healthy fish. This is not this year's planter. Maybe it is, but he's got great tail. It looks awesome. Good healthy fish here, swing him up and we'll just, look at that, there's a nice, well he is this year's planter, but I love these single hooks. They, they just, they perform, man. The fish, you'd think on that little teeny hook, you're not gonna get them, but man, they just don't miss. Okay, Steve, I love that, uh, I love the Rocky Mountain Tackle um, squid and I love the Max Wedding Ring. They're two of my favorites for kokanee trout the bass on uh, some of these lakes where you're trolling the bass will crush it too so it's a great selection sportsman's warehouse head in there go to the aisle it's just like christmas every time you do it's happening so fast sometimes these surface lures it might be planner after planner but you got your grandkids in the boat or your little kids in the boat they are reeling fish in and sometimes fishing is not about big fish it's about the experience so have a bunch of good food bunch of snacks and treats you can load the boat with good stuff and then try these types of techniques because you're going to catch fish and the little kids man they're not they don't have the stamina adults do if it's slow they want out so fast and furious way to do it nice oh, the lucky the craft. oh yeah dude oh it's oh we it's, got one here too doubled are we doubled up, up? yeah we doubled got a double up. oh we need we need a triple right now, Steve. Oh, I think mine is gone. I think he's gone. Gary, you're gonna have to catch that one. Okay, well this is a little teeny, no, oh, I you still got small him. One. Do you have a small one? Nice, yep. nice, we are doubled up right here. I think Steve might have me size-wise. Oh, no, this isn't real big. Of the Battle of the Planners, <laughs> twins. Yeah, they are twins. Carbon copies They're right exactly there. Exactly twins. How cool is that? <laughs> you know, these fish, they're gonna turn into something good next year. That's what I love about Deer Creek. I love the fact that um, there's browns, there's bluegill, there's crappie, there's smallmouth, largemouth. What a diverse lake. Okay, we're just gonna get this guy off. There we go, dude, help me out. I may not even have to do anything to him. That guy is gone. Troubles, always have a pair of pliers. 
If not, you're gonna end up with uh, one of those bad boys. After I do that, I just like to check my line right down here just to make sure that it didn't get nicked in the process. Good to go. And see this one, as you mentioned, the single hook on that wedding ring really makes it easy yeah. to release. It's hard to, and I like to check these too, just to see that there's not an abrasion on there and that's still pretty good, feels good. And then we'll warm that guy up and be ready to go. But look at that, that little teeny hook really does the job on big fish. Very cool, let's get him rigged. Another fish. Here you we fished. go. Dude, Maybe are you on? Get a chance to get that one out. Dude, we're in fish heaven, planter heaven. I love it. I'm Near just the sending surface. it out. Near the surface. What does it's it feel any good? Small fish. Small I think fish? this is really truly one of those small planters. The other day we came up and got probably 40 of these in an hour and a half, two hours. They're willing. Yeah, and it makes it super fun because you're gonna you're gonna catch a lot of fish doing this. This is a great way to do it. And you know what, who doesn't like to catch fish, so. I'll get you the pliers and we'll just shake that guy off. Yeah, this is one with the trebles, obviously, on the Lucky Craft that you wanna make sure you've got pliers. All right, and I like to just come right here. Looks like he's got the whole treble, so I'll just give it a side. Oh, sorry about that. Come on, buddy. He's all right, he's raring and ready to go. Let him go. Boom, he's gone. Cool. You know, in some lakes, that trout that big, if there's largemouth, that is dinner for the largemouth. Jerry Sloan. Whoa! Whoa oh, dude, that's a good fish. Here, Here you, you go, go, Steve. Catch him. Catch him. <laughs> that's a better fish right there. Or he was angry when he hit it, but he hit it with force. We're, we were just doing our Frank, Frank Layden imitation. Oh, he's not even that big, but he just about took the rod out of the boat. Look at that. Dude, the Lucky Craft is the ticket. Let me give us a little turn. We're headed to the wrong spot. I'll get my pliers here. Just get him over the boat. Look at that. You know, that is, those are great little planters, great fish. You know, this is a put and take reservoir and that's why they're here. Next year, that fish, he'll be a solid two pounds. This is a super fertile reservoir. And when you can come up and catch fish like we are here, how fun is that? So, got my lucky crap. I'm just gonna put her right back out and let her rip. Fish, 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 you got him. There we go. Pop him, there baby, pop him, Steve. I'm, not, I'm gonna keep eating my candy bar. You keep eating your candy bar. This one is another planter. Not one of the better fish. In fact, he's one of the smaller fish of the day. But they are willing. Boy, are they willing. He was so small, he couldn't pull it off. He couldn't snap it right. off the clip. The rod was going blah, 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 blah. All right, we got those pliers there. We'll get him unbuttoned. And I think we can probably pop him once. There we go. Here, here, you're on. Here. Oh, fish on, man. Oh, my rod was leaving. That's a better fish right there. That is a really good fish. Yeah, this is a good fish. This has got to be one of our better fish on the surface. Yeah, football. Little two pounder. Dude, he was dragging the rod out. He was dragging the rod out. All right, let's see what we got right here. Steve, I might have crossed over on you. I think I did. Nope, we're okay. Yeah, see, look at this. This is a solid. This is another solid two pound fish. Bring him on in. Oh, it's a good fish. All right, here we go. I'm skiing him up, skiing him up. There, whoa. No, I'm skiing him out. Shooting baskets. Hold on, hold on. He's coming back Shooting in. Baskets. There we go. You got him. What do you think, Steve? That's a nice fish. That'll go at least two and a half. Look at that. That's one of those solid fish that you come up here, 
knowing that you've got the chance at. You've got to go through a lot of those planters to get one of these, but boy, it sure makes it worthwhile. That's There's the second one. really there nice we go. fish of the day. I'll pull him out and show you this fish if I can get him out where I'm not going to get hung up on on uh, look at that that's good fish right there pound and a half two pounds that's a solid fish right there I love it that's why we come up hoping to get a couple of these these are great eaters great for the smoker baby that is an awesome fish We'll bring him over here and we're gonna let him go. He absolutely crushed it. He was dragging my rod out. All right, we'll see if we can, we'll just see if, if uh, this is what I love about this Lund. You can kneel down, you can get right here down in the water. And I'm just gonna hold him because he's a better fish. He put up a solid fight and I wanna make sure that he kicks off. There he goes, look at that. Look how cool that is. Gorgeous fish. Sweet! Fall fishing, baby. It's fast, it's furious, and I promise you, any lake in the state of Utah right now, barring, say, maybe Utah Lake, um, it's gonna be awesome for trout. Really good.